It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome. How's everybody doing? Uh, Gary Spikes. What a heck of a guy. If it was for him, I wouldn't be at home. Welcome, Steve. Nice to see you there. Denise. Hello there, Denise. Uh, Gene Hudson. Welcome, Gene. Uh, let's see. Val. You like my color TV, Val, in the tent? Yes, everybody was like, what the heck, Grizzly? We have all kinds of toys. Hello, Crystal. So, uh, welcome to... Let's see here. Bigfoot Outlaw Channel. That's what we're going to start calling ourselves. Hello, there, Lorna. Kathy A. So, how you doing there, Kelly Joe? I'm good. Good. So, what we got going on today? Well, we're going to interview Ash. And she's a paranormal investigator. So, I'm excited to talk to her. Awesome. Right. Let's go ahead and bring her in. Ash, come on down. Welcome. Hi. Hello, so how are you doing there, Ash? <laughs> it's glad to be back. Yes, yes. So tell us all about yourself. Um, like I said before, if for people that didn't hear my last podcast, um, I'm a paranormal investigator. I'm also um, highly intuitive, channeler, a certified remote viewer. Um, I've been sensitive since I was a kid. I've always loved the paranormal. And... That's about it. <laughs> awesome. So what made you get into this, Ash? So when I was a kid, I lived on a reservation in Arizona, a Native American one. And um, I would see auras around people. And I've always been interested in it, but things happened and I shut myself off. And so um, I had a rough eight years um like early adulthood and so um once i had like an awakening so to speak i started getting all these gifts back and i started seeing things and feeling things and and so i was like which way is the best way to do it is to get into paranormal and start investigating and as i did that i was able to start getting in tune with my gifts understanding them better on a different level good good i bet when you're a kid you didn't quite understand it no. No, I had no idea. So you didn't have anybody that was aware that could teach you about it and tell you it was okay? No, everybody shut me down. Oh. Um, yeah, like I kind of hit it for a while. Um, but like the people that I was around, like my, my mom, my dad. So my real mom, she was a psychic medium is what she told me. Um, she was, she's full blooded Native American and I have a whole line of family that's like that, but she, um, <clears throat> I didn't know her my whole life. I only knew her at the end of her life in my adulthood life. But, um, yeah, they shut me off. Like, um, I knew I was gay when I was 10. And so like they convinced me I was going to hell and all that kind of stuff. So I shut myself off from that. I just shut myself off from everything but i know i didn't understand it i didn't realize until last week i walked into i remember like walking into a house in like middle school and i was like oh yeah there's a, a big man in overalls and a, a white wife beater standing right there in this house i didn't realize i was reading houses at that time i didn't understand it no one had ever validated me oh okay yeah you know yeah because i used to do that all the time too i'd go on a uh, field trip or something say oh there's a school mom standing over there or <laughs> it's like oh there's an indian battle going on or i could go dig musket balls out of a fort on the ground you know <laughs> i thought everybody could um yeah. but my mom she always encouraged me you know because oh, she was real aware so i had that but um it's neat to be able to bring closure to the souls, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's a, it's an amazing feeling. Um, like you were just saying, I was riding down the road. I think I was on a school bus, too. 
we were on the school bus and I looked out and I seen three Civil War soldiers standing on the side of the road. And so I came back later in life and I felt what was happening in the barn. And I would tell the story of what happened. And um, it was a very intense thing and I felt it. And I could tell you what happened. And I knew like it was in a, a period like 200 years ago. But I did, again, I didn't understand it. I didn't know how to describe it. I didn't know anything. So I just thought that I was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I got a cold. Um, yeah, it's okay to be weird, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. And it's so fun to meet the different energies and to find out a different site, you know. And ghosts are everywhere you go. Everywhere. I mean, you can't go anywhere without having ghosts. My <laughs> friends were used to me. We'd go on a, a holiday on, out west. Like we went to Holbrook, Arizona. And, mm. and uh, we had to go to the museum to release a, a trapped spirit there and then go have coffee and breakfast. <laughs> It's normal. Yeah. It's just, yeah, go about your day. People They're go like, okay, can home. we have coffee now? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love yeah. that. I, I know like different dimensions lately. Um, once I started understanding one gift, I started tapping into other gifts. And then the more knowledge I knew, the more things came in for me. And so um, I can feel, so the question I have for you, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, so the way that I see spirits, it's not a physical thing, right? It, it's through my mind, but it's not like I can physically see it even in my third eye. It's, I feel that energy and then can explain what I feel. I can describe what they look like by the way that they feel. Does well, that make that's sense? how you perceive. Right. You're, you're a feeler and a knower. Right. You know, I say see because I'm a clairvoyant. I see, smell, taste, and touch. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. No, you're okay. I hope you feel better. Thanks. Sorry about that, guys. But. Yeah, that's how you perceive it. And sometimes it isn't a physical thing. It's it's a sensing thing. Oh, yeah. That was my first, um, my, one of my first senses that came in was sensing. I've always said that, like, I had balls of energy in my hands since I was a kid. And I thought I was making it up for people to, like, um, for attention. And then I found out later on that it's, it's because I'm intuitive. I have healing in me. Right. And your hands will tingle and get hot or cold. Yes. 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 And you can use it when you're doing your investigations too and feel portals and all that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, and, and a lot of times um, I don't like saying it out loud just because like, I haven't felt comfortable enough to go to that level, but for instance, I'm finding I see things in pictures that other people don't. It's how you see. Yes. Right. It, right. You can't compare yourself to another right. person. It's how you, I say, do you, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And it isn't a one up and thing. Everybody right. has no. their, they have, everybody has their different gifts. Right. I love that. Everybody perceives it differently, feels it differently. Right. Yeah. But it don't make it wrong. Right. Recently, I've been doing uh, free readings just because um, I want to learn. Uh, I want to learn to trust myself more. And so I've been giving people free readings and I have found like I don't tell people I'm just this or just that. Like, it's just whatever comes to me. Right. That's what it really is. And it ain't no thinking thing. No, no. And matter of fact, a lot of the stuff that comes out of my mouth, I don't even know that I'm saying it until it comes out. Right. Yeah. Well, Because a lot of my friends are clients and friends for like over 40 years. And, and they'll say, well, you told me blah, blah, blah. Well, 
I'll forget that I told them blah, blah, blah. But they right. take notes and they remind me. <laughs> <laughs> I always say it's for you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> right. They take notes. Right. You know, when I tell them stuff, because yes. a lot of it's future. And right. it's just a lot of fun, you know what I mean? But when a lot of it can be channeled, you know what I mean? It's like you're just like in the timeline continuum and you're floating in and floating out. Yeah, that's, that's um, something I've tapped into um, the past few months is is channeling, learning how to do that and not just in like a channeling state, but with anything. Right. You don't have to lose your consciousness to just tap into it. Right. You know? Right. And you're very good at it. You're you because it's a natural. You're a natural born, you know, reader and and you know, see, knower and, and feeler. You're a feeler, a sensor, yeah. sensor. I say you use, use your senses. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you for validating that. Oh, you're welcome. Because you are what you are. You can't not be it. <laughs> right. And I actually had someone, um, Tell me the other day, she said, um, you don't need, she was like, you don't, you don't need to list, uh, look at spirits. I'm trying to think you don't need to want to look at spirits. And I was like, why? And she was like, because once they start talking to you, they don't stop. And so she was trying to tell me not to be a medium. And I told her, I was like, but that's my natural state. Well, you can, natural. I can't. Right. So give them limitations and boundaries, you know? Right. Because. They'll talk to you till the cows come home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I've had to learn that because I was like, once my channeling thing came, like my channeling energy opened, my crown just opened. It was like everything was coming to me and I wasn't realizing it and I had all this stuff attached to me and activity crazy in my house. And I'm like, what's going on? And my friend who's a shaman, she was like, okay, okay, we got to get this. And she had to pull some stuff out. And so I've, I've really worked hard on, on maintaining like the boundaries and not giving my energy all the time and pulling my energy back into me. And also tell the spirits they got to stay where they are. Don't let them come home with you because you were toting people. Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was. She picked them right up. Come on home with me. <laughs> Toting people. It sounded like you had a papoose. <laughs> Pop in. <laughs> people are like, Grizzly, what's a papoose? If you don't, if you're not Indian, you don't know what a papoose is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. So what what's one of the uh things that you've done that has been the most intense for you in your investigation i'm going to be honest that this was at fairfield county infirmary the shirt that i have on it was um it was the first time i had encountered a crawler now mind you going into investigations we do not, I don't, we don't know anything about it. The guy who is the leader of our group, he does, he researches it because it's something so he can validate us. And because right. we have all, everybody on the team is intuitive in many, in different ways. We're not the same. Right. So, um, anyways, I was upstairs. Um, they call it the dungeon, but it's actually in the attic. And, um, I immediately, like my heart started, like my chest started getting, heavy and then i was sitting i started getting uncomfortable and another girl was there with me and she's also in tune with it and i was like there's a crawler there i'd never seen a crawler to be honest i didn't even know what a crawler was really i just it was like an energy uh, an energy i tapped into and um <clears throat> come to find out that was in it like that was known it was known for that um people had experienced a crawler like there and you know so yes um it, it chilled me to my bone. It scared me. It was very, it felt very unpredictable. 
and I didn't understand, maybe because I didn't understand it, but it was scary. And then I went under an Estes method. And when I went under the Estes method, I, what I do is I rock and that opens up like my channeling state. So that way I can hear different frequencies rather than just the spirit box. And, um, but we had the best the best Essie's method I've ever had, like a lot of us had ever experienced or seen before. Um, and even though that crawler for a while was right up top of my head, um, it, it kind of like got shooed out. And then a spirit was able to come in and we were able to cross her over. Good. <laughs> she needed to go. Yeah, she'd been there a long time. And she morphed into something totally different. It was like a different kind of energy of emotion. Really? Yeah, that's what I see. Wow. You know, was like, like she was so traumatized that it made it into something else. Wow. See, with the crawler, you know what I thought was it was for like the mentally challenged people, how back in the day they'd lock them up in the hospitals and beat them and abuse them. And to me, it seemed like one that was like a criminally insane but had um, in the afterlife turned into a crawler. Right. And yeah. So it morphed into another energy. Right. It was very nasty. Right. Because all that emotion mm -hmm. forms other things. You know, and half the time it's not even human anymore. It's a separate entity, a separate energy. Is that because like when they, and that, that's a question I have for you, is is that because maybe um, their humanity, when they do cross over or stay or whatever, like their humanity stripped, right? Right. All the negative imprints and energies. Were right. Okay. Like, and bring friends party down, you know, yeah. it's like negativity begets negativity and it forms like its own thing, you know, sort of like a negative entity of icky yuck yeah yes <laughs> yeah yeah sure. jamie says that Esther's session she's referring to was pretty intense yeah i'm good mm -mm. So jamie jamie works uh multiple jobs but one of his jobs is he's there with people at the end of their life through hospice and so jamie never gets on camera ever Hi, Justin. Wow. And when he got on camp, like, okay, first of all, I was sitting in Estes Method. Mind you, I don't know what's going on. He wasn't up there while this was going on. My friend, Little Amber, was next to me. And she's also intuitive. And um, this session went on for like 45 minutes, which is very long time to be under something like that. And so um, I halfway through it, Jamie comes in and he's all the way in the back. And um he was realizing that this man was holding her, this woman there because she was protecting the kids there from this man that was evil. Right. And so like she was hiding the kids from him because they were like, like um, energy suckers. And so um, anyways, he walked in and he realized what was going on and he like jumped in and he got right next to me again. I had no idea that he was there, but um he he walked her name was marie he walked her through it and and it, like little amber was explaining to her what the other side looked like and um what it was going to be like and so he actually was like come on i'll hold your hand it's going to be beautiful i promise you have nothing to be afraid of and it was like i had an outer body experience because it was like i seen this like white light form around me and then it was like a man that looked like her husband i'm getting like chills right yeah. now it was like a, it was like a man. I, I couldn't see his face, but she was like she loved him, and it was like a like it reminded her of her husband. And so I watched him walk off into the light. And so then when I came back down, I was very emotional and I was crying. And every when I took my headphones off, I mean I was disoriented, but like everybody was crying. Jamie was standing there, and it, anyways, it was just like the most beautiful moment. It's so. Beautiful to cross souls over. Yeah. It's really cool. That wouldn't have happened without him and the rest of the team that was there. Wow. You got a good team. Yes. Yes, we do. And you guys work as a unit. 
Oh, yes. That's very so nice. To, nice to find. Yes, it is. Even if you have differences, you're able to understand it without judgment. Right. And still accept it and then still work together. Agree to disagree. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Nice. So, Kelly, have you, you, you were born seeing spirits. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. What age were you when you started Two. seeing them? Two. Two. So I have a question then. Um, I know like you're the interview me, but so my son started seeing spirits when he was two and he started, he got scared. Um, and I think he shut himself off, not even realizing it. But now recently he's five, he just turned five. And he said, he's a lot like me in many ways. And he he's always loved, like he will sit down and turn the show on. He's like, mom, let's watch Bigfoot. When he was three years old, he's like, let's watch Bigfoot. Let's let's watch aliens. Let's watch ghosts. Like he, I wouldn't let him watch ghosts, but I'd let him watch aliens. I would come in the living room and he would have aliens and, and Bigfoot on the TV, like a three year old <laughs> watching grown up shows. <laughs> well, he's connected with all that, you know. Psychic women birth psychic babies. And that's a good. That's a good phrase. Yeah. Yeah, because he was like, "Mom, I seen." My, my wife's a little weary. I'm going to be honest. She's kind of um, in the middle with it. I don't think she necessarily believes that, but I do. Um, but she doesn't voice it to him. But I, I'm like making sure that he understands things because I don't want him to shut his emotions down like I did. Right. So um, anyways, he was like, hey, mom, randomly, like two days ago, mom, a spirit, two spirits just went in your room and then my room and then went to the bathroom. And then came back out. He was like, I'm scared. Will you go check? And I was like, yeah, of course I'll go check. I didn't see anything. But um, anyway, so I think he's tapping into that more. Yeah, so more. he can see spirits, you know. So yeah. you can give him, <coughs> give him a prayer to say, a protection, okay. you know, before he goes to bed. And tell him that. He can send them to the light and through the light, you know. Right. And tell them that they're that he can ask their story if they want to talk, you know. And because he, he's like you. Yeah. You know, it's crazy that you say that because just Sunday night, I told him he asked me all like almost every day, Mom, when I get older, can I go on an investigation with you? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And I told him um, for the first time, I was like, hey, next time that you see a spirit, ask them, hey, where are you from? He might not understand what I'm saying, but I think that he does on a different level. So I was like, ask them where, where they're from. Like, what do they remember? I just ask him these questions and and see what you get. And then um, anyways, I explained that to him for the first time just Sunday night. Yeah. So he'll be fine with it. Okay. You know, yeah. Val wants to know why do spirits like bathrooms? Because of all the activity in the water, they're attracted to the water. Water's constant; it flows they, like they, Yeah, you know the toilet, the shower, the sink. You know. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's also and their they, way of traveling through places. Right. And electrical equipment. They love electrical mm -hmm. equipment. Awesome. You know, it, it's just... But he doesn't need to be fearful. The, the, the goat, he saw two kids and a woman, right? In your house. Oh, that's what he said. Well, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, I think so, he, he thought it was a man, but I think it was like an older boy. You know, and well, there was a man that's the grandpa. He comes in and out sometimes. Okay, you okay. Know? So it's okay. a it's a land land spirits that where where your house is. So they okay. live there and they they'll cohabitate with you. 
Okay. Because they okay. love the land. They're like from the 1800s. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. Okay. Cool. He said, yeah, the man has a bow tie. And he explained them to a T. He said the mom, question, he said the mom had a baby. An oh, infant. interesting. Yes. Wow. And they probably passed away of some disease or something. Disease. You know, the baby and the mother both. I That's bet there's I, I bet there's a graveyard close. I mean, I live out in the country and I'm I'm almost positive there is. I mean, and I've always said since we we bought this house, there was already a spirit in this room, actually. And um I've always said this land is so old. There's so many people just walking around everywhere. You just never know where it's gonna come from. Um, but I've always said that there, there's a grave site that is, uh, like a graveyard that is hidden or it's been, right. it's been it's, yeah. a house is sitting it's on over it. The, it's over the hill. Okay. If you go over the hill and over mm -hmm. to the, let's see if I can get my right and left correct. If you go <laughs> your front door to the right, that yes. is where the graveyard is. Wow. Interesting. Wow. Thank you for telling me that. Oh, you're welcome. You're easy to pick up on. <laughs> really? Yeah. Because I'm so receptive, you think? Yep. Do you okay. have uh, other questions? Um, who, me? Yeah. <laughs> um... <clears throat> and what would you tell somebody that's um, getting into this? Um, like, what's a good age, and 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 what do you what do you think they should start out with as an investigator? Well. In my 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 opinion alone, I'm gonna say um, if you're old enough to go into these places, like there's an age limit, then do that. But I mean, people can investigate if if people were born with this gift, you can investigate however old you are. But if someone is new going into this investigation, I always say like if you watch TV, understand it's TV, right. Everybody has different ways and different opinions on how that they do things, on what kind of belief system. Don't form your beliefs off a specific show or whatever. Like, go into it, feel your own energy, what feels comfortable to you, and, and that will come natural to you. And to always look at the whole picture and, and don't always jump to demons or this and that. Like, always collaborate. There's going to be more more than one or two, like at least two different, like a REM pod and a, a EMF reader going off at the same time. That right there is a connection and a validation of something's going on rather right. than if it's sit, like you have an EMF reader sitting underneath an air conditioner, even though the electric is off, but that might be connected to something else. You don't just count that and right. don't take evidence. Right. Making evidence is not, it's just not, it's not how healthy for anybody. Totally agree with that. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So do you have another question for me? Your light is yellow. One hour Sorry, that's my Alexa. What? Sorry, my Alexa's going off. Oh, okay. It's well, my kid to rush his people visiting. <laughs> no messages. Do you have any other questions for Kelly about your abilities or anything? That's what I was thinking. Um, I did actually. Um, okay, so when I read people, I, I do it for free because I always feel, first of all, I always feel like the energy um 
for instance, like I happened to be on like a Zoom call two weeks ago and um, I men something got mentioned and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm a paranormal investigator and I had to do um, this podcast last week and I was explaining that and I seen this guy in the chat room and I was like, oh, he has a lot of questions. I'm going to have to send my number to him. And sure enough, he hopped on. He was like, hey, I have questions. And I was like, I already know it. I'm sending you my number. And so um, anyways, I was like, I'll read you for free. And so I read him and I, I did read him for a couple of hours because there was a lot. There was a lot that was needed to come out for the first time. I like read a past life and, and why that was entwined with this life and did a card reading and stuff. And so for for and then after that, I was like all of my, like my energy depleted. And that's just when I knew that he had enough, that he had a lot to think about and work through and that it was done. <clears throat> that being said, what would you like? You read people. What what is your advice on like? Because I think sometimes I overgive them a lot of information. Right, you don't need to do that much. Make right. sure you set up a circuit that protects your energy. Mm -hmm. You know, see the white light come up and go around and back in, mm -hmm. and you say a prayer of protection before you do anything. Right. You know. Because so you're, you're, you're depleting yourself. Yeah. Well, I do ask my spirit guides to protect me. Right. Um, but is that that's not enough, you think? Right. You just have to set up your circuit so you don't deplete yourself. Okay. 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 What do you have advice, Kelly, to help her out with some of the things that she's learning and doing? Well, always set limitations and boundaries so you don't overdo you know um and then make sure that you replenish yourself you know after you do an investigation because it can take energy out of you and make sure you always take a bath at nighttime you know bounce the energy either down or up in a ball of energy to the light through the light or into the earth that way you are you know, toting all the energy, you know, okay. that way, and other people aren't going to run into that energy ball. Don't just throw the energy ball on the ground. Somebody will run into it. That ain't nice. Uh, Ashley Lauren is asking, Ashley, did your confidence grow the more times you got validation or do you still feel like you may get stuff wrong or you may be wrong? I mean, to be honest, like it doesn't matter how, like I know when things Yes, the more validation I got, the more confident I got. And that's the reason why I'm able to read people now. It's not because I just trusted myself. It's because I, I got validation from people. Um, and then especially getting validated from known people like you, Kelly, that, you know, that it just means a lot to me. But um, even though, like, I, I hear things and I say it, I still second guess myself. And I, and I can't help that. It's just something that that comes to me and uh, and that's something i have to work on my wife tells me all the time you gotta trust yourself because i'll sit down and like people call, randomly call me and ask me if i do like a reading or whatever and, and so i'll do that and then i start asking quite instead of like sitting down and saying this is what i feel because i tap in before getting there i i'm like okay so why don't you just tell me a little bit about yourself or like tell me about your situation and then you know so I'm still dealing with that. Well, like I say, it ain't no thinking thing. And you can't second guess it. You know, always ask before you do your reading or your investigation, then it be true and correct and helpful. You know, that might help you. And then know that you did your work and leave it at that. You know, and don't ever forget to close the circle. You know, when you do a reading, you open the circle for energy. When you yes. do investigation, you open the circle for energy. Don't mm -hmm. forget to close it. I do sometimes. <laughs> I yeah, do forget. Then we, we have all, everybody, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's you like, for gee, what did I do? What's happening? Oh, <laughs> 
forgot to close the circle. Right. <laughs> Oopsies. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, uh, here's a question. Um, I was getting my hair done and the woman that touched me, like, I don't think to just always like ground myself. I've been working on that lately. I really have been every day. Okay. What, what you can do to ground yourself, put yourself in a bubble that um, it's a protection bubble and mm -hmm. anything and everything that you pick up on slides off. Okay. And okay. then when you need to ground yourself really quick, you just see red tree roots going into the earth. My native friend taught me this and just see it red tree trunk and red roots go right into the earth and it'll instantly ground you okay yeah i do the the roots and i also do a waterfall going out of my um root chakra so that However, way it through my head goes it works for you yep okay okay um but yeah so like some people can touch me and i'm not even it's like I'm just there to get my hair done, and then I'm like, "Oh, do your does your stomach hurt on the right left side of or the the right lower side of your stomach?" She's like, "Oh, I just went to the doctor that for that this morning." <clears throat> so, okay. So, like, ground myself daily, but but right. is that that like it's but make sure I, I say like this is for the whole day, right? That way okay. it's done. Do it before your feet hit the floor. Okay. There you go. Bada boom, bada bing. Then you're done. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe in taking forever to do anything. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like um, I had a feng shui friend. She wanted me to do 99 prayers and do this ritual for feng shui. And I just said, blah, 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 times 99. And I was like, <laughs> She goes, you can't. Why not? Why not? <laughs> it's your intention. Right. That's what I believe. <laughs> no offense to Funk Sway. <laughs> uh, Justin asks, uh, <laughs> Ashley, uh, do you ever sense something just by walking past somebody and feel the need to speak to them? Oh. Yes, all the time. I've done that since I was a kid, and I didn't understand it until now. You do too, I do too. Yep. Yeah. I've I've went into shops and said, "Hello, your wife will be okay." <laughs> yeah, like you know, be, like I can feel people's emotions, and so I'll like I feel like they are um, depressed or going through something. So it'll be something as simple as this, like, "Okay, so." Oh, you, you have lovely hair. I love your t-shirt. Even if I didn't like it, it's something that I wanted to say to them. And it could be that minute, which is a big deal. Like, I think not everything's the same to me. There's nothing um, better than the other. But anyways, um, but then That's I talk right. to people all the time. And I whenever walked I up to people's car when I pulled them over and went, and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, ladies and gentlemen, that's from Super Troopers, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look at Kelly. <laughs> anyway. I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good movie. I know the movie. I have seen it. You just saw their faces. They're like, did that just happen? <laughs> I mean, say what? <laughs> um, I was uh, anyways. I was at a crystal shop um, a couple weeks ago and the man there, he's actually a doctor and like um, has written many books and all this kind of stuff, but he teaches uh, shamanism and reads past lives or um, hypnotherapy and stuff. Well, anyways, apparently, so he had two twins that passed away before they were born. And I was talking to him. I talked to him for like an hour and a half and um something that just happens like i just end up channeling that energy because it's a it's an i feel like it's a need to and um anyways he was like you look he was like he sees his daughter in his dreams 
and I looked just like her. She would have been born on the day I was born or the month I was born in same age, same year. Um, he was like, he looked just like her. And a lot of the things, the way that I said and talked and, um, do, he was like, this is what she's doing in another, like in the spirit world and just all of these things. And then I was able to tap into that energy and then be able to give him a hug from his daughter, like a physical hug. So, I mean, it could be like a wide variety of things, but yeah. And then sometimes I feel things and I'm like, yeah, I better not say that. Right. <laughs> you always have to ask yes or no. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like stop cheating on your wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, you walk by people and like, damn, that dude is sick in the head. <laughs> yes. Ooh, yeah. Although I have done readings like that. Who's doing who? Oh, man. Uh -huh. It's like, okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, Val wants to know, Ashley, have you ever felt an overwhelming feeling to give someone a message but apprehensive? Just curious. Yeah. Yes, I, yes, I do. Um, it's like a, a gut feeling. And then it's it's basically saying like you need to say something because it could be a spirit coming to me that's like trying to to say something or but i'll always ask for that person permission because i believe in in free will like hey do you have is it okay if i tap into your energy for a moment or can i read you it's just something i feel comfortable with but yes right. yeah well it it's, like, it's like getting the cost if you just jump on them that ain't nice yeah. I'd be like this in Walmart. Hey, you, 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 like everybody just line up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I I have gone into restaurants and accidentally, you know, opened up and it's like it's like, oops, I escaped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. There's a, um, do you, Kelly, do you ever like get people, like people are drawn to my energy. I, I feel like they're drawn to people that are gifted in that way. And, and so like, um, do you, does that, when you're drawn to people and they like randomly talk to you about something, you open up to them and then you have to ground yourself again after you've opened yourself back up? Yeah, I always do. Okay. I always do. Okay. I always close the circle. It's just. Okay. Like I can be sitting on a bench all by myself eating my lunch and mm -hmm. I'll have, I never know if it's real or Memorex. I'll have a spirit come and talk to me and I seem as real as you and me. Right. A real person. Wow. So I'm like, all righty then, you know, like you said, the civil war people, when I was in North Carolina, a little uh, gray coat guy got in the car with me. And I thought they were doing a reenactment and it was a ghost. Wow. And he says, ma'am, that war is just going on forever. And then he just faded out. Wow. And tell her about your girlfriend that got. Ow. What, 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 which story was that one, Chris? The one that got. The one that got slapped. Oh, yeah. I was in a restaurant in Durango, Colorado. And all of a sudden, I see this little flapper. You know how they had the little band in the flapper dress? And then there's a guy with a cowboy hat. And he sits down next to my girlfriend. And the little flapper came up and slapped my girlfriend through her face. Wow. And and she fell forward in her food. And I was cracking up. It wasn't funny, but it was. So she and got she slapped, slapped by a ghost. <laughs> and she felt it? Oh, totally. She fell okay. forward. Okay. Wow. And she saw it before it happened. Yeah, and I was I was just giggling. I don't know why. It wasn't nice. <laughs> I'm like good. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> makeup. Wait a minute. I gotta read this right. Makeup, makeup, and matcha. 
Is that yes. how you say it? Yes. Okay. Uh, how do I tell if the spirit is hitting me or if I experience something else experienced previously? Well, that's a tongue tie question. Really? Kelly, that's for you. Uh, well, you can answer too, you know. <laughs> well, she's my team. Uh, she's on my team, my paranormal team. Oh, when it's spirits hitting you. Well, that's a it's a different sensation than than um, a residue. You know, re residual is a little different. But yeah, uh, they can hit you, knock you down. Um, you know, you've been smacked. Oh, makeup! You have been touched. Oh, yeah, yeah she you has. Touched. Yes, recently, actually. Yes, I, I just saw it. She yeah. has been touched. She got smacked in the face. Yes. Yeah. Where was that? Did that happen? Um, Olive Hill, Olive Hill High School. Yeah, it was a, Interesting. a young girl that was the snot, like a mean girl. Came up and smacked her. She had like the high hair, you know. Really? You know, yeah, the higher, closer to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and then red lipstick. And she had like blue eyeshadow. Oh, see, I sent, we didn't get a lot of activity that night, but I sent Grizzly some pictures and and one of the pictures that I found, it was actually a, um, a video. I was filming her husband and uh, it was like a brief moment, but I, I tapped into like, there's something there as I was watching it after I got home. And so I like zoomed in and I turned the light up. I don't manipulate it. I just turned the light up because right. I can see it better. And so you see a man, a very tall man. He looked like he had on um, like a, like pants, like a mechanic's wear, but in a shirt that was tucked in. And there are two kids behind him and one's, he's got his hand here, like down. And there's another kid standing next to him, like, like next to him. And there's two behind him. And I'm almost positive there's one up here. And so again, like they couldn't see it. And so I didn't know if it was something I was physically seeing. And then I showed my kid, my five-year-old. And I was like, tell me what you see in this picture. Actually, Miss Myrtle, who's on here. Um, she was like, tell me what you see. And he was like, he did, he did not take forever. He literally just looked at it and said, there's a man, there's a kid, there's a kid, and there's a kid. Oh, and there's something right there too. And it was the room, when it, the room that like a lot of us had gotten, um, didn't have a good feeling in it or been touched. Right. Or and he was keeping the kids hostage and it was the maintenance man. Okay. We we did not get a good energy from him. Yeah, he's he's he overtook the the children. Yeah, that was all right. So good. what's this picture of? Okay, so what I did was I sent you the original photo. So this one, it doesn't look like it has. This is a grave. It's in Nicholasville. It's only one, and it's of um, Mary Todd Hunter, and it's in the middle of an intersection. They're trying to preserve it. So anyways, I was, I was with Miss Myrtle and she, I took a picture. There's nothing there behind the grave, but then you go to the next one. Can't hear you. I'm not talking. No, I was having him go to the next picture. Okay. Okay. No, that's not it. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, this is the second picture that I turned up the light. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Ooh, Do you see ooh, it? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So go back to the other one that you just went went over. Um. Okay, that's the for, that's the one I was looking for at first. You can yeah, see I the person lives under the grave. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's someone there. Yeah. And then go the other way, Grizzly. Yep. Go again. Okay, there she is. She's in a wheelchair. Yeah. She's looking Shut out her hands door. Out like this. Yep. And she has bangs, a thin nose. Looks like a little cap and a white shirt. 
And you can, she's sitting in a wheelchair. Yeah, she had, she's covered, her lap is covered by a blanket. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, it's a blankie. Okay. Whew. Yeah, so that was another one. Um, I wasn't looking. I just turned around to take a picture and then bam. And I knew to turn up the light on the other one that we see. The first one that you were like, ooh, I got goosebumps. Yeah. Is, is because um, I was like, something's in this. And you can't see it. So I turned the light up. And sure enough, that's when I seen the legs coming out of the grave. Yeah. If you, if you had time to look like closely, you could see the bow tie like in a tux or whatnot. But all right. The picture that you just had, um, we looked at before this picture. That one. Uh, Okay, no, not that one. The one, it looked like it was in a school. It was the one right before. Um, okay, go, uh, go back. Which way? Um, I guess the other way. <laughs> All right. There. Oh, I, I didn't know I sent you the video. Okay. Do you see the man in the, the hallway? There's the man, yeah, with the pants and his, his yes. hair and his shirt. Yeah, standing sideways. Yes, like at the very uh, back of the at hall. The end of the hall. Yes, right there. Yep. Yeah. There's a there's a, um, a another picture just like that that I sent you where I turned up the light. Okay, now you can see him. And, and he's wearing glasses. Yeah. See, there's a kid on his right uh, right hand. Yeah, there, right there. Right below oh, no. him. Yeah, below him, right there. And one behind him, it's a little girl. She's got her hands on his waist and her yeah. hands down like this. And she has ponytails. Yes. Pigtails, I mean. And there's yeah. one behind her, too. But you can see That's the little boy's looking straight ahead where his arm is. Yep. Tall man, he's got black hair, black eyes, black mouth. I mean, it's, I mean, it's just what it looks like. Below his shoulder. Yes. Okay, this one. What do you see? In the background? No, in, in the actual picture itself, like the um, the reflection. There's a face. So this was... Um, there's a full body apparition right here. It's a little girl. She's sitting in a chair. It's the one to the, it would be my left, where the skull is at the bottom. But you see where the light is coming in uh, at the top of the glass right there. She's got blonde hair. Oh, like okay. A, I see her. Yeah. yeah. Sitting in a chair, you can see her legs dangling from the chair. Yep. 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 So That's everybody. Like a scarf or something around her neck. Yes. Yeah. So that's actually, um, everybody had, it was the second time I'd been there. That's the where, one where I caught like the alien and stuff in the same place, location. And so uh, my wife was outside, everybody was gone. And I was like, hey, this is between you and me. Can you, can you do something? No cameras, no pictures, nothing. She didn't do anything. So I was like, okay. So then I was just taking pictures around. And then I'm literally holding the phone up and I look back and I'm like, oh, okay, you're going to show yourself to me. And so I'm looking, she's not there, but she definitely showed herself in that photo. Oh, she, yeah. And she has glasses. Can you see it, Grizzly? Yeah, I can see it. So I, the energy I picked up from her was that her eyes were um, glued shut and her mouth was sewn. This was a funeral home and the man, I didn't find this out until after the second investigation. Uh, the undertaker, I, I knew the undertaker was there, but I didn't know to the extent of what he had done. And so he did nasty things to after people had died and oh, stuff. No. And yeah, he had done that to that little girl. Oh. Yes, that was a different one where she one anyway was one of those pictures. Her head was tilted to the left, and then I asked her to straighten it up, and she did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's all those the were caught in the past few weeks. Wow. 
Well, I've enjoyed inter interviewing you, Ashley. I know. Thank you so much. It's been a great. Yes, absolutely. And uh, how does everybody find you? So I am, um, I'm on Facebook, which is, um, my wife and I share the same Facebook, but it's Kelsey and Ashley Banta. Um, on TikTok, I am Paranormal Ash, but I also, it also says uh, Seer of the Dead. Um, and then my email is acerber5347 at gmail.com. You can contact me on any of those social medias and I'll get back with you. Thank, um, Kelly Joe Grizzly, seriously, thank you. Thank you for validating me. Thank you for absolutely everything that you've done, seriously. Friend, and thank you for friend, me on, friend me on Facebook, Kelly Joe Moneyham, because I don't know how to friend you. Okay. And then I'll get in touch with you and we'll exchange phone numbers and stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd love that. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we got a show at 9 p.m. Eastern time and from coast to coast around the world. We'll see you shortly. Bye-bye. It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, ship, should we run? <laughs> no. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, shit. Should we run? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a grizzly. Are you sure it's not Jim Monk? <laughs> No, I'm out of here. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, I'm out of here. Huh. Maybe it is a chipmunk. It's a grizzly. Are we gonna die? I don't know. We're just gonna sit here and listen and watch. Let's get out of here, maybe. <laughs> Fall! <laughs> <laughs>